Hi guys, today we're going to look at um, an alarm clock application that is built using JavaFX MVC. Uh, we've already built quite a lot of applications um, using that pattern, so what I'm going to do is just do a um, quick code walkthrough. So this is the um, starting point, which is the alarm app um, extends application. You might want to add um, the entry point if you want to, because some some IDs won't allow you to run without um, having the starting point, the entry point. So um, you should be fairly familiar with those um, or these types of um, sort of applications using the uh, built using MVC. So we have the typical uh, view stuff, which is which is um, in the fxml file. So this is your view. What we have here is a menu bar and list view, and that's about it. So if we run this thing, um, we should see exactly um, that. So here it is. Um, the application, we have the menu bar, which says alarm, so there you go. This is the menu. Um, then we have menu items, add and switch theme add adds a um, alarm clock um, set to five second five seconds um, after the time that we clicked and then it goes up and it says alarm went off as a message which is the callback which is a function called back when the alarm um, goes off and then we also have um, switch switch theme which switches the um, text and the background um, in terms of colors. So black goes to white and white goes to black. Um, it's a sort of a, um, what is it? It's how you can basically change um, the skin of the application. Um, scan of controls um, using CSS, which I don't normally do, um, but I ought to, because that's the preferred way of um, having basically styling your application, because these files could be loaded externally, they could be changed externally without having the need for um, recompilation process. Right. Um, So yeah, we have a um, starting point. This is the application which wires everything together. You have your typical view, which is um, here. Then we have our model, model class, which is rather short. Um, then we have our controller, um, which basically allows us to move things to um, do something with the model using the view. And then alarm class, which is the domain object the stuff that um, is used to work um, with the application. Right, so starting from here, we have the launch, which is the standard entry point. Um, we load our fxml file using this. Get resource, which is placed in the same directory, or if you're using the Maven directory structure, then it's under resources. Then we have our uh, alarm controller which we instantiate manually. Um, same goes with the model. We could have done this um, automatically, but um, because we want to be able to call things like on exit on the controller, it's rather nice to have an instance to it. But again, you could have instantiated um, in the uh, XML saying um, controller and pointing to the controller class, basically. Um, and also some frameworks, JavaFX frameworks, allow you to do most of this wiring behind the scenes. Then we set our scene, which is new scene, and um, the stuff that gets loaded as the scene root um, is the fxml, which is that. So this goes as a root node. Then on set close request, um, when the stage closes, so when the user clicks X, we exit 
or give the exit, exit command to the controller so that the controller knows what to do. Set title, resizable, and show. Um, so the controller takes this uh, model as a dependency instead of um, instantiate, instantiating it within the controller. We have a reference to the root reference to our list view, which is um, that thing which contains our alarms, um, alarm clocks, which are items. Boolean for controlling the theme. If it's dark, then we use um, dark background, I think. Um, yeah, so the background color is black and um, the text is white. Um, the white CSS is the other way around. The initialize method is called automatically. It has to be named exactly like this in order for a fixable loader to find that method. Also, once we've loaded um, our root node, so this will be called uh, when those things are injected, we obtain a list of style sheets and add one for... So we start with um, dark CSS. And then if there was a need to switch theme, which is called when we um, click on switch theme, this thing gets called and um, we reverse the billion and then uh, we assign an inverse, which if it was false will be true. If it was true, it will be false. And we set all, um, by setting all, we are essentially removing the existing CSS and replacing it with the new one. So if it's dark, use dark, um, else use light. Those methods on add, on switch theme, on exit are callbacks, and they're wired in the fxml file. So menu item add, which is that, um, we assign this on action, um, which is the name of the method, um, and there is a prefix, which is hashtag. So it should be pretty straightforward. And then we have our list view, which is this thing, um, which contains those um, alarm objects. An alarm object is a domain-specific object um, for our application. And um, it is also a node, so we extend stack pane so that we can easily put things into the list view without having the need to convert them from being pure objects to something that can be displayed on the screen. We capture a state of the active sort of state in the billion. By default, it's true when we start. Then once it goes off, um, it becomes false. And um, there's no way to turn it back on because once it goes off, um, it went off. I suppose you could um, change this so that you could reset the alarm if you wanted to. The application, as you can see, is very basic. It gives you the um, gives you the idea how to build things, but doesn't do anything um, on its own. So the only thing we need to um, give to the alarm object when we instantiate it um, is the local time, so the time when it should go off, which is that. So we keep that as a reference. Style sheets, alarm, so we can style this thing. Um, and this is how you then reference that particular class of objects in the um, CSS file. style class, uh, we create a new text object. Um, we set the text of that to um, the time string, which is hours, minutes, seconds, and uh, milliseconds. Then we have a um, style class of that text. So um, if you wanted to change the view of that particular text object, and the style class is alarm text. Um, which we can reference again using this. So just dot and the name of the style class. 
So we change its fill, which is um, the color with which the text is rendered. Font size is the size of the text font. Finally, we gather the children so we get reference um, of the segment's children, add text to it, and there's nothing else really. Set alignment to center left. Have a few accessors here, um, which is get time is active, just for checking. And finally, we have report method, which triggers the alarm. Um, and that's the thing it does. So you'd probably want to have some sort of callback method um, passed in so that you could call um, when the alarm goes off. So instead of just printing text to your screen, you could um, play a short mp3 sound, for example. That could be an interesting extension. Um, so we've done the controller, um, done the alarm. Our model is, um, well, you can think of it as a list, a large list, and that's about it. We have the list of alarms active, or actually the list of all our alarms, and then if they're not active, they're removed. Um, Executor service is um, the service that allows us to run things in the background threads, or um, just single background thread because when we create just one. And that's all we need so that we can run the um, tick for the clock um, in the background thread rather than the um, JavaFX thread. So we can get all alarms, um, which if you notice returns a wrapper around the alarms, the actual alarms list, so that um, the list itself cannot be modified um, outside of the uh, model. We can add an alarm, we can remove an alarm, and um, those are delegate methods to this list. We can start and stop the model, which um, these are just convenient methods that allow us to trigger the start and stop for the model so that the model knows what to do um, not all models need to be started or stopped, but in this case, because we have a background thread, we want to terminate it um, when the application stops. Otherwise, it will just hang the um, Java process. So in the start, we schedule um, this particular method to run every second. There is kind of no point in running it every millisecond because um, you know, it would be just a waste of time, I think, um, because the alarm is set for a particular minute even, not seconds. So you could, if you wanted to, run this one every single minute um, rather than every single second. Um, but that is fine. Um, the tick, which is run every second, we run this stuff because um, Right, so this method runs on the background thread um, and we cannot change the view because of how the architecture of JavaFX um, handles those things. So we have to run any view changing stuff on the JavaFX thread, which this run later method allows us to do. We go through the list of things. Um, we filter and yeah that's a lot nicer so we go um, through every object um, in the list of alarms uh, we check if the alarm time is after or the current time is after the alarm time which means that the alarm should now go off for each such object that passed the filter um, we report which does that. And then once we've done the stream, um, we remove every alarm that is no longer active. In other words, every alarm that already went off. And that is it. And this has to be done um, 
here because by removing um, an object from the alarms list, we are effectively removing it from the view and um, any changes to the view have to be done on the um, JavaFX thread. And that's why we have this here. Um, right, what else? Yeah, I think that'll do. Um, the code is on GitHub. The link will be in the description. And um, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.